All right, guys, it's our back page of our quadratic transformations. We've already talked about shifting the graph up and down. Today we're going to talk about moving it horizontally, which is right and left, which is a change in the H value. And then we're going to talk about a vertical stretch and a vertical dilation, or a vertical compression, excuse me, which is a change in the A value. Now, you may ask what I'm talking about. Y equals x minus h squared plus k. That is what we call vertex form. Right? A controls whether the parabola opens up or down. H is the x value of the vertex. And then k is the y value of the vertex. All right, so number one, I have the quadratic function x plus 3 squared. And again, we know it's in vertex form because this is a parentheses with a squared behind it. So I noticed that I plugged in this number for h. Now, let me erase this and let me say I plugged in this for h. Because if you look back over here at my vertex form, this is x minus h. So in vertex form, it's x minus whatever you're plugging in for h. Now the difference is, in my quadratic, it's not a minus anymore. It changed to a plus sign. So if I already have a minus sitting here, the only way for me to get plus 3 is to plug in a negative 3. Because when you plug in a negative 3, you change, change, and make it a positive 3. So we know that the h value of my vertex is negative 3. We know that the a, which is the number in front of the parentheses, is a positive 1. And we know that the k value, which is the number after the parentheses, is 0 because there's nothing there. So I know that my vertex is at the point negative 3, 0 because, again, h is the x value of your vertex, k is the y value of your vertex. So negative 3, 0 right here in my table is the vertex. Now, a quick review on how to put this in your calculator. You're going to open up a new document. You're going to open up a graph. And we're going to type in x plus 3 squared, right? So let's put parentheses. And you're going to type in x plus 3. Let me zoom out a little bit. I know you can't see the calculator screen, but at least you can see what I'm doing on the calculator. So x, which is down here and then plus 3 squared. Enter. So your graph looks like that right there. Now, to find my table, because again, I want to write a table of values. To find my table, I'm going to press Menu, go to number 7, where it says Table 1. Here are my x values. Here are my y values. So all you're going to do is fill in this table. So I scroll up to negative 6, and I have a point at negative 6, 9. I have a point at negative 5, 4. I have a point at negative 4, 1. A point at negative 2, 1. Negative 1, 4. And 0, 9. All right, so we plot those points. Again, my vertex is going to be at negative 3, 0. So go over 1, 2, 3, 0. There it is. Plot my point at negative 4, 1. I have another point at negative 2, 1. I have a point at negative 1, 4. I have a point over there. Connect them. Let's make our parabola. Looks like that right there. Now, let's talk about domain and range. Domain, sorry, let's go ahead and fill in the vertex. We know what the vertex is. The vertex is at negative 3, 0. Let's talk about domain and range. Okay, domain is all of my x values, which once again, 99% of the time, our domain is going to be all real numbers, or we can say from negative infinity to infinity. Because again, this arrow tells me it keeps going to the left and to the right. So all of my x values are included. The range is my y values. The range is not all real numbers because the range does not go below that point right there. 
So any number above that point is included in my range. That point has a y value of a zero because that's my vertex. Your range will always include your y value of your vertex. And I want numbers that are greater than zero. So y is greater than or equal to zero. So the question asks, what's the difference between f of x equals x squared and f of x equals x plus three squared? Well, x squared always goes to the origin. We shifted that over three units to the left. Right, so it says translated left three units. And our rule would be F of X plus three. All right, guys, moving on to number two. Okay, number two, you have x minus 5 squared. Again, this is in what we call standard form. So a, x minus h squared plus k. So once again, this is already a minus in the parentheses. And in my quadratic, it's still a minus 5. So all I did was take 5 and plugged it in there. So I know the h value is a positive 5, which once again is my x value of my coordinate of my vertex. The k, which is the number after the, uh, after the parentheses, is still 0. So I have a vertex at 5, 0. So I can go ahead and plot that. Now, once again, we want to find some more points on our parabola with our table in our calculator. So once again, you're going to open up a new document. Okay, You're going to input parentheses x minus 5. Close your parentheses and square it. Press enter. And once again, guys, if you want to get to your table, you are going to go to menu. You're going to go to number seven. I know it's really, really blurry. So once again, menu seven, one. There's your table. All right, so we're going to fill in our values. So I'm just going to put it to the side. 2, 9, 3, 4, 4, 1, 5, 0, 6, 1, 7, 4, and 8, 9. If I wanted to plot those points. We'll look like that. So there is my parabola. Now, once again, I am looking for the domain and range. Again, domain is your x values, which 99% of the time is all real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity. My range starts at my minimum, which in this case has a y value of 0. So I want the y values that are greater than or equal to 0. So what's the difference between my parent function, x squared, and then the quadratic? x minus 5 squared that I just graphed. Well, I shifted from the origin to the right 5. So we say translated right 5 units. So the rule will be f of x minus 5. All right, let's look at some dilation. So now we are going to change a, which is the number in front of my x squared, which is the number in front of my x squared. So once again, we're changing our a now. So if I look at my quadratic, I have y, or f of x, equals 2 x squared. So once again, let's plug it into our calculator. Let's get our table of values. So we're going to plug in 2 x squared, graph it. We're going to press menu 7, 1 to get your table up. So my table, I fill it in. I've got negative 3, positive 18, excuse me. Negative 2, positive 8. Negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 8, and 3, 18. So if I was to graph that, it's still going to be at my origin because I'm not translating it any. All I'm doing is I'm changing the a value. right? So my vertex is still going to be at 0, 0. I have a point at 1, 2. I have a point at negative 1, 
positive 2. I have a point at 2, 8. I have a point at negative 2, positive 8. There's my parabola. My domain, again, is all real numbers, or from negative infinity to infinity. My range, the lowest point, is going to be 0, right? So I need numbers sorry, that are greater than 0 because all of my parabola is above that point. So y is greater than or equal to 0. So it's difference between f of x, or sorry, f of x squared, f of x equals x squared, excuse me, and then my quadratic 2x squared, well, the graph got narrower, right? So it's compressed toward, sorry, I shouldn't say compressed, it's stretched upward, or it's closer to your y-axis. So the graph is narrower. And, and the y-values are double. So the rule is 2 times f of x, right? And we would call this a vertical stretch. Okay, now looking at number 4, number 4, the a is a 1 half. So the a is less than 1. So on number 3, if my a was a positive 2, which is greater than 1, and now it's a 1 half, which is less than 1, Instead of it being a vertical stretch, this is going to be a vertical compression. Now let's look at what that looks like. Okay, so once again, I'm going to graph this. You're going to type in 1 half x squared in your calculator. You're going to get your table by menu 7, 1. Let's fill in our points. So we've got negative 3, 4.5, negative 2, 2, negative 1.5 or 1 half, 0, 0, 0.5, 2, and 4.5. So again, if we were to graph this, we got a point at 0, 0. We got a point at negative 1, 1 half, and positive 1, 1 half. We got a point at negative 2, 2, positive 2, 2. We got a point at 3, 4.5. Negative 3, 4.5. So our graph looks like this. So you can see how the parabola is wider, right? Instead of it being narrow or closer to the y-axis, now it is wider. It's opening wider. So that is what we call a vertical compression, right? So the graph is wider. Or I could say the y-values were halved, right? And the rule is 1 half f of x. Now, it's still in our vertex. It's still at 0, 0. The domain is still all real numbers. The range is still y is greater than or equal to 0. The range would change if my parabola flipped upside down or if it moved up or down along the y-axis. And again, the k, which is the number after the parentheses, changes whether it moves up or down. All right, my last piece here, I have some functions and then how it affected the graph. So this plus 3 right here moved the graph or translated left three units. Because again, it's opposite h, right? So we plugged in a negative 3 to get this positive. This stayed a negative inside the parentheses, so all we did was plug in a positive 5. So we moved or translated right 5. So a number inside the parentheses is going to translate it right or left or make a horizontal shift. A change in A is a dilation, and it's either a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. This is a vertical stretch. This is a vertical compression. Adios, peeps.